Thank you for joining us. You're listening to the Write Project podcast and radio program. This is a show about writing and modern Newfoundland author culture. This program is produced and recorded at CHMR FM 93.5 FM in St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador and is aired on other great stations in the province and elsewhere in the country. It can also be heard online at www.chmr.ca. I'm your host, Matthew LeDrew, author of such novels as Touch Your Nose and Jacoby Street and founder of Engine Books. Let's see what we have today. Okay, welcome to another episode of the Right Project Podcast. I am your host, as always, Matthew LeDrew, the very vaccinated Matthew LeDrew. Uh, I have this, I know that I say every episode of the Right Project Podcast is special. This one really is. We have on with us Lily McCarthy, the amazing author of Quick Bright Things, uh, the newest lesbian romance novel from Engine Books. Thank you so much, Lily, for coming out, for agreeing to come on the show. Uh, Thanks for inviting me. (laughs) No worries. No worries at all. Uh, Can you tell me about Quick Bright Things? How did you start writing this? Um, I actually wrote the first draft when I was 14. Okay. (laughs) So uh, I started the first chapter of the first book, the first, (laughs) the first draft uh in math class when i was 14 years old okay um because of a little anecdote a friend of mine told me uh i don't remember it in fall but she was going out on the drive with her dad i think and she just saw this girl with like bright purple ends on her hair walking and she was just fascinated by her and i wrote an entire novel (laughs) I think that person was my wife, actually. <laughs> it could have been. It could be funny. It could have been. That would be so amusing. <laughs> um, that's wonderful. That's great. Um, how did you do in that math class? Oh, I, uh, I wrote it online for a platform called Wattpad, which I still write on occasionally. Uh, but at the time, I was pretty dedicated to writing on there. I, I wrote probably a chapter a day and uploaded it. Uh, and I built a small audience of people who wanted to read that kind of stuff. Awesome. Awesome. So tell me about the process of, of bringing it from that kind of like online chapter a day format into this. How much of it is like if someone's read it before, how much of it's the same? How much of it is different? What was the editing process like? Um, well, Wattpad makes it a little inconvenient to move things off of their platform. (laughs) Um, I had to go into like each chapter and paste them in. And I started by rewriting them chapter by chapter on their own because that's how I was used to writing it. I wrote a chapter a day um, and they were released one after another uh, to an audience. So it it got a little... uh, (laughs) confusing and you wanted every chapter to have a lot of conflict in it so that people stayed for the next one um so I had to go in slow down the pace and make things blend together I'd say it's a, an extremely different book from where it began which isn't necessarily <laughs> a bad or good thing <laughs> no no it's just a thing yeah yeah it's a different different beast in this in this form different title yeah. too it, it was called uh, autumn originally I believe yeah, uh, the original title was Autumn because it was more focused on the romantic ac- aspect. Yeah, and now it's more of a coming of age romance, right? And finding yourself and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Cool. So, how did you kind of come to the character of Piper? I really like that character and and like reading about her and 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 her. I I really empathized with her, um, like discovering herself. Uh, that was really interesting to me and, and kind of touched parts of me that I, that, that, you know, you forget exist for a while. Uh, can I, can I ask you about the process of creating her and, and getting into her head? What, if that's okay? Absolutely. Um, I, I tend to write characters that are a lot like myself, but uh, when it came to writing Piper, I wanted to make someone far away from myself, which, <laughs> 
was weird because uh, I was very used to putting my own thoughts and feelings and opinions into a character, especially when it's in the first person. Uh, so it was the first third person thing I fully delved into. And she was as far away <laughs> from me as a person as I could get. Uh, I wanted her to be like, there's, there's still aspects of her that are very similar, <laughs> obviously, yeah. because my, my brain made her. Yep. Um, but I gave her a, a lot of differing opinions, very different uh, circumstances. And yeah, I wanted to create a person who was very much a, an everyman <laughs> and uh, write her experience uh, differently from any experience that I had. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. I, I see that in that character a lot, actually. I find it funny. Uh, yeah, I think you noticed I had a look when you said, uh, like, the character is different from you as possible. And I'm like, I don't think you did. Because I'm like thinking, like, like, <laughs> like what, what is the opposite of Lily McCarthy? And I'm like, no, no, you're not a green space alien with tentacles that, that shoots lasers <laughs> in her nostrils. Like, you know, if we're thinking or really like different... If you want to get that literal, she's still human. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's not a single-celled organism. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Authors are really funny. Uh, it's, it's, I, I find it's like, I wanted to create a character that was as different from me as possible. So this person's exactly like me, except they have red hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh it's like the what is it dan wells i think i'm not a serial killer yeah it's like you get in and you're like wow it's so different and then you're like it actually is yeah 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 you pulled it off well. yeah <laughs> yeah oh my oh my uh yeah yeah i always find it funny um when some authors write air quotes fiction i mean l like some authors are very good at good at it you know what i mean like like um and some authors are really good part of the joy and piper is very different from you i don't mean to be insulting like, like piper is very different from you i don't think of you when i read about piper or anything like that you were very successful like that because a lot of authors kind of get accused of like the author insert character and i don't think you did that like you imagined fully formed characters and that's great uh, a lot don't kind of thing like oh look at Stephen King and his characters he air quote made up is the, are they an, <laughs> are they an alcoholic or drug addict writer I bet they are oh look they are wow <laughs> like <laughs> yeah like look at Jack Nicholson <laughs> acting like a crazy person <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, artists do that a lot. <laughs> yeah. that's a, And I mean, there's nothing wrong with it as long as it's done well. It's just... Yeah. I don't know. It was, it was not really my jam. Even if a character had a similar personality to mine, I never wanted them to be in a similar position to me or to look anything like me because I'm making a new person, you know? <laughs> And part of it is a kind of accepting that the, the limits of the human brain. Like I love to do this, ex this experiment with kids when I work with them, and that's uh, draw a picture of a creature that a human could never imagine. And you see half of them like try, and the other half just they get it, look at me, and go like, "You can't do that." That's the second I try, it's it 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 messes up, and I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." Exactly. Like, yeah. yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, so this was a really fun book. I really like it. I love the ending. I love the cover. I know that the cover is like not something that you like. You didn't do the cover, but OMG, what a beautiful cover! Uh, and the title and all the the Shakespeare references in it. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous book that I think a lot of people are going to like really treasure. I think I think this is, the book's going to mean something to people. Oh, that means a lot. <laughs> That's kind of what I wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 you know, you can never tell how people react, but like, I, I think we, I think we'll, we'll see, we'll see. You know what I mean? But I think so. Um, 
where do you go from here? Is there, uh, you're, you said you were working on something else and possibly taking a semester off and writing. Uh, is it linked into this or is it just, are you going to be like, uh, nope, that novel's done, bam, and then move on to another one off and bam, and off you go? Um, well, I'm a bit in between ideas. Okay. Because I, I'm, I'm not one to stick to a, a genre or a theme when it comes to stuff. So I know for a fact this book is a standalone. Um, okay. Because I feel that her, her, the rest of her story is up for interpretation. Okay, um, I like that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I would like to try a different genre, move in a different direction. Okay, that's lots of fun. Awesome. Any, uh, any spoilers as to what genre we might, we might be seeing from you in the future? Or, or am I not allowed to know because it's not coming to me? That's okay to say. <laughs> um, I don't know yet. I would love to do some fantasy because fantasy and sci-fi and stuff is kind of what got me into writing in the first place. Uh, the series I'm I am number four sci-fi alien series um, that got me into like wanting to write a lot so I'd like to go that direction okay um, I really look forward to that that's gonna be cool well whatever you do next I look forward to you're you're a tremendously good writer um what was it like uh, with the with the editor we paired you with? Uh, you worked primarily with AJ Ryan during this book. Uh, how did you find the editing process? Because you came from again that that Wattpad and your editors, you only get feedback from your audience, which is great, but your audience loves what you do, kind of thing, and they they're gonna love most of what you do. Like if they like it, they like it. You know what I mean? Whereas an editor is yeah. gonna go, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh... It was pretty incredible. I mean, I I always believed that um, art is fully subjective. Like, I think people should be able to imagine what characters are thinking, even though they're told what they're thinking type of thing. Yeah. Um, so to hand the book to somebody else, I was like, well, maybe this is like, that will become a problem and it'll differ more from my original goal, uh, but I have never had someone read my work and understand it as well as AJ did. Yeah. Uh, she, she yeah. got it immediately. Yeah, she's uh, pretty intense. She she gets in and is like, and figures out the mechanics of a book and how it works and takes it apart. It's horrible. She'll take it apart in front of you and then be like, look, <laughs> this is how it works. And it's like, yeah, I didn't know that, and I wrote, I wrote it, you weirdo. Jeez. Yeah, I, I think that one of the first things uh, that she said to me is that it gave a very Breakfast Club vibe within, yeah. like, the different characters in it. And I was like, that is the best thing you could have possibly said to me about this book. Oh, my God. And then I was fully, I was fully in. I would have yeah. just left it with her and done, like, let her edit it and not even read it after because yeah. I just trusted her. I did reread it though after after she did it. That's just good. I told I you to. Know. So I you I told you to and you <laughs> said you did. So I really hope you did. <laughs> I did. I yeah. honestly I mostly read through like reread through it because I hate ellipses and I know there are some places where I could have used them, but I didn't. I <laughs> so all right. I, I think I did have a have a note on one of the chapters that said, actually, we're going to get rid of this ellipses, okay? <laughs> I, yeah. I yeah. took it out. Yeah, yeah. That's really funny. I uh, went through and added, before we went to print, like 30 different ellipses, uh, all on one page, actually. So that's that's good. Yeah, yeah. just take my name right off the book. <laughs> just take it off. No, and I'll replace it. To. I'll re Actually, funny story, I put an ellipses on the cover. It's Lily dot 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 McCarthy. That would actually be pretty funny. You can do, you it can would, do that. It would add suspense. <laughs> it would be like Lily <laughs> McCarthy. Lily who? Lily yeah. who? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, Lily McCarthy, have you ever Googled yourself? <laughs> yes. Uh, are you happy with the results? Honestly, yeah. I... What <laughs> okay. I, I didn't Google my name because I knew 
the only thing that would come up would be my mom's Facebook. Um, <laughs> I uh, instead I googled my username that I use on everything a couple times, uh, and I have discovered that it takes you immediately to my Wattpad, not my writing. <laughs> so that's good, at least. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, Lily McCarthy, what is a word that you cannot spell? Like if this word appears in your book, either AJ or spell check spelled this word. Oh man, that's a good question. Cause I am good at spelling. <laughs> you can ask AJ. There's not, there wasn't many spelling mistakes. Just am, a lot of ellipses. There's a, a ton of ellipses. Okay. Please, I hate, I hate everything about that. I, I don't know. There are words I can't say. Okay. <laughs> I can spell words. Any, any word that doesn't derive from, this is going to sound so pretentious. You might have to cut this one. <laughs> but yeah. any word that doesn't derive from French, Latin, maybe Italian, but is an English word. Yep. I'm, I, I'll probably, things okay. with silent letters get me and names of countries get me sometimes. Okay. Okay. We're like there. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. I was about to say, what words can't you say on an audio interview? And that was going to go bad. Yeah, definitely don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With a different author. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't sure. know. I once was on uh, this, uh, this program and someone kept nodding or shaking their head to the questions. That doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Track. Nope. Sure doesn't. I made that mistake uh, in my CBC interview. Yep. 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 <laughs> and that's why we pre-record these. Uh, <laughs> Lily McCarthy, what is your favorite comic book or comic book character? Spider-Man <gasps> or Loki. Okay. I love, love Spider-Man. Why do you love Spider-Man? And now we have to talk. Now we have, this is going to be a conversation. So many reasons. There are so many reasons to love Spider-Man. He's yep. so goofy. Like, I love the fact that no part of him has been cool ever, even though he's one of the coolest superheroes. Yep. He has always been just some geek <laughs> who's trying his best. Uh, he makes dad jokes, but has no children. Yeah, exactly. He is so good. I love the like stupid homemade suits he does. I love the whole it could be anyone behind the mask. Like it's it, he is an everyman, and that's what I love about him. And he's so much better in the comic books than he is in the movies. Yeah, so far I've really liked Tom Holland though. Tom Holland comes closest to me anyway. But that's 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 a controversial statement. That's so controversial. Why? <laughs> Why him? That's just my Spider-Man. It's like, like this what is like who's quippy, but like for a certain reason, like because they're anxious and you know what I mean? Like it's just very like, yeah, this is this is the voice I picture. Like that's incredibly surprising. Cause I okay. I don't hate Tom Holland Spider-Man, but he's not my Spider-Man, you know? That's fair. It's like it's like how I love Joaquin Phoenix's Joker, yep. but that's not my Joker. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like he's I think the problem with Tom Holland is that he's a little too handsome and cool. <laughs> he's just a little bit. He's there, not dorky and weird enough for me. There is a little bit of that. Yeah. Where you want to look at him and go. But to be fair, we haven't seen him before the spider bite. You know what I mean? Like maybe this is just spider he genetics. I don't. Yeah, maybe that will flash back and he'll be like a total glee but i don't know i don't like that they brought it back to high school spider-man again i prefer college spider-man i really <laughs> hope they keep him throughout i hope that they keep him on and do i would love to see a trilogy of trilogies where it's like three in high school three in college and then three as an adult i would love it oh wow i think probably my favorite like movie of spider-man might be Spider-Man 3, 
because that is that the one where he does the little street dance when he's trying to be cool <laughs> that's yep. incredible that is the best scene ever done in cinema except for am i a man or am i a muppet from the muppet movie and no i will not take debates on that one okay and <laughs> or into the spider verse because that was done so well I love Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah, I really did. I also like the Andrew Garfield ones, man. Not the second one. The second one was hot garbage. But that first one, man, that's, I remember sitting with my, with, who's now my wife, in the theater, that scene when he saves the little kid from the car and he's too scared to come up and he takes off his mask and just gives it to him and said, take it, it'll make you strong. And like, oh man, I got chills. Like, that was awesome. That was a good scene. Like, that, I mean, any, I'll watch anything Spider-Man related. He just has to be in for five minutes and I'm going to watch it. Yep. Um, yep. But I mean, there's something about that goofy ass dance. Yeah. And there's something about Miles Morales. Yeah. Is it, it is Miles Morales, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Uh, something about Miles Morales just listening to tunes in his little room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that it gets me. It's so good. And yep. divorce Spider Man is peak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Awesome. Awesome. Wonderful. Um, Lily McCarthy, what is the first book you can remember that made you cry? <gasps> That's a good question. Okay. Um, the first one was probably I am number four. <laughs> okay. Why? Um, major spoilers for this book. Okay. But I mean, everybody knows it happens because it's the hero's journey formula. Well, I assume you've read I am number one, I am number two, and I am number three first. It, it starts at I am number four. That's impossible. It is. Okay, wait. Do I have to explain the entire plot of, of this series to you? I've never heard of that series. I'm going to be honest. Okay, then I probably will. They, they're they aliens. Okay. The main character's name is John. They're aliens who had to flee their planet called Lorian because they were being hunted down by another race of aliens that wanted to kill off their entire race okay they go to, <laughs> they go to um earth and it's just uh can't remember how many I think 10 kids and 10 mentors who go and uh the kids have some sort of like charm or spell or something put on them I read this when I was like 12 um to make it so they can only be killed in order of their numbers. And he is the fourth one. And number three was just killed at the start of the book. Okay. So they also have to be separated from each other because the charm doesn't work if they're together. I don't know how that works. Don't ask. But <laughs> because you, you can infer, because it's a, it's a boy and his mentor are the main characters, that one of those two got to die. The mentor always dies. <laughs> They do. And the mentor dying crushed my soul, uh, hit me right in the heart because they, they did that cheesy thing that all like family channel shows did where they make something bad happen to a character right when the main character got into a fight with them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so, that, so that you regret it forever. You know what I mean? So that you can never make yeah. it right. Yeah. So you spend the rest of the series... And John, who is the main character, is always dwelling on, oh, I can't believe that we ended on such bad terms and he's dead now. But yep. it got me, man. I don't know. And the, the reason, and that always gets, that, that they keep coming back to that well because it gets you. Because, like, that is the giant fear of humanity. That, like, if you, you know, say something horrible to a loved one and then storm out, that something will happen to him and you'll never get to make up. Like, that's... That's a fear of real life that they can just milk forever, you know? It'll always work. It will. It will. All right. That's a great answer. I am number four. Cool. Cool, cool. Um, Lily McCarthy, do you think that someone can be a writer if they don't feel emotions strongly, if they're not like hard on their sleeve type? absolutely fiction Good. is fiction you know you can make anything up and it can be believable people yeah. are like the man who wrote star wars never was in space 
That's true. <laughs> I That's couldn't true. have said that word. But I mean, fiction is fiction. You, you don't have to have experience to write a thing, even though experiencing stuff makes it easier to write the thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Good answer. Okay. Uh, Lily McCarthy, do you have any friends that are writers? And if so, uh, how do they help you be a better writer? Um, well, I don't, I don't know about writers in the same way that I write religiously super stupid long <laughs> at any point. Um, but I have one friend who is very dear and close to me who uh, works extremely hard for every D&D &D session we have ever had. Um, and I don't know, he's like the most motivating person in, in the world because he's constantly like, you can do it, you're the best. And, you know, he just builds that ego way too high. But I got to love him for it, you know? Okay, I like it. All right, sounds good. Branching off of that, uh, Lily McCarthy, do you think having a big ego uh, helps authors or do you think it hurts them? I think, I think any extreme is bad. Yeah. You know, if you're too self-deprecating, you're never going to write anything. You're never going to try to get anything published. You're going to hate everything you write. And if you have too big of an ego, then everything is gold and you'll never take criticism. So. Yeah. You gotta have that healthy medium of hating everything you write, but still being willing to publish it. Yeah, that sounds about right. That's a good answer. I like that. I like that answer, Lily. Yeah. <laughs> the ego is best big when you're still in the process of writing. Yeah. And then you have to squash it the minute the edits come. <laughs> yeah. You gotta put it back in the writing desk and take it out again when you need it. Exactly. Yep. Okay. I like it. Uh, Lily McCarthy, what is your favorite childhood book? Uh, the Velveteen Rabbit. Oh, that's a beautiful book. What's your What's that's your memories of the Velveteen Rabbit? Uh, my mom read it to us a lot, <laughs> and uh, I was a big fan of like Toy Story, and I had a lot of. I thought everything was like a conscious thing that had a soul and emotions because I watched Toy Story and read The Velveteen Rabbit so many times. Yeah. And it's just a, a beautiful concept of this little thing that like your child puts so much love into something or you put so much love into something and it has the capability of loving you back. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. I like it. <laughs> Thinking that everything is conscious is terrifying though. Like, is this yeah. glass conscious? The things that this glass has seen me do, like, my God, dear Lord in heaven. I wouldn't want to talk to that glass. That's for no, sure. no, my Lord. Uh, Lily McCarthy, uh, did you at any point consider writing under a pseudonym? Absolutely, I did. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I almost did it with quit right things <laughs> really okay i think we did talk about that briefly yes yes what uh what what i guess what made you think about it and what made you choose not to whichever way you want to talk about it well i see a lot of authors who write in multiple genres use pen names for certain you know genres like nora roberts and i was like well, what if i write in different genres since all under my name then Will that make me harder to publish or harder to publicize? But I mean, I want my name to be attached to these things because I did them <laughs> and I want it to be easy for people to find me and talk to me about it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I, I, I think that's smart. I think you're good. Be <laughs> proud of it. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for coming on again. For all of you, we'll be here again next week at 4.30 Newfoundland time or online at chmr.ca. Please tune in and we'll talk more about writing culture in Newfoundland.